Hey guys, this is Sports with Dylan. As you may know, I am an Oilers fan, so this is not the most fun video I've made, but hey, I get to rant to people about why my sports team is not doing well. The Oilers this season have sucked, and I mean sucked, not only just for a good team, not only are they doing worse than expectations, no, they are one of, if not arguably, the second worst team in the league right now. I don't get it. I do not get it. The Oilers are a good team. On paper. They arguably have the best roster in the league. On paper. Coming from last season. They had the two best players in the league. Coming from last season. Another former first overall pick in Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Who scored over 100 points last year. Zach Hyman who is a great winger, and Evander Kane, who despite struggling with injuries last year, went on the ice, he is a superstar. That is arguably the best five forward group in the league. In fact, I wouldn't even argue it. I would say, for a fact, prior to based on how they've been playing this season, that is the best five forwards in the league. You could argue it's the best top six in the league. While it is unclear who the top six is, and I'll get into more of that later, then it's still hard to miss. You've also got a fairly solid defense with Darnell Nurse, who is being paid to be one of the best defensemen in the league. You've got Evan Bouchard, 2018 first round draft pick, who is really developing into something good, especially on the power play. You've got Matthias Ekholm, who was traded over from Nashville last year. He's a star, good defensive defender. And then, in net, and this is coming into the season, you've got two good goalies. You've got sophomore Stuart Skinner, who was nominated for the Calder Trophy last year and played amazingly in his rookie season. And you've also got Jack Campbell, who was a star in Toronto prior to being signed to Edmonton. And while he didn't perform in his first year, what people would have wanted in Edmonton, he's looking for a bounce back season. He even won the goaltending job out of camp. This was looking good. But then, since then, that was the last time I had hope. Coming into the season when you saw my NHL Power Rankings video, and while I was arguably lower on the Oilers than a lot of people, because I only had them as fourth in their own conference behind Vegas, Dallas, and Colorado, and lots of people had them in first, honestly. They were one of the top teams ranked two be predicted to make the Stanley Cup Finals and potentially even win it this year. I had hope. It felt good. We had a good team. This was going to be the year. We had a good offseason, it seemed like. I mean, there were some debatable decisions. I didn't love most of them, actually. But they signed a top six winger in Connor Brown, who's supposed to boost this top six even more, especially given that he played with McDavid back in in the OHL before either of them were drafted into the NHL. So this was going to be great. Another year of development for Bouchard and 2019 first round draft pick Phil Broberg, Dylan Holloway 2020 first round draft pick and Raphael Lavoie 2019 second round draft pick both stepping into the NHL. A bounce back season for Jack Campbell and a continuation of what we start to see from Skinner and all around, just a team that is working well together. I had hope. And then they lost that hope in me pretty darn quickly. First game, they lose to the Canucks. Second game, they go and lose to the Canucks again. And it gets worse from there. At least the Canucks have been good this season, which is another team I should make a video about, actually, because that's been the opposite of Edmonton. But sticking with Edmonton, they have lost a lot of games right now. They have only five wins coming into mid-November. It is November 21st today. November 21st. And they only have five wins. 
five wins for a total of 11 points, which is the third worst in the league. And that's after a couple of wins. Before that, they were the second worst team tied with the Sharks for worst, in fact, although they had one game at hand. Now the only two teams worse than them are the Sharks, who have no one other roster, and yet the Oilers managed to lose to the Sharks. The Oilers lost to the Sharks. The Sharks, a team that traded away Eric Carlson, a team that has no one on the roster, a team that lost and had 10 goals scored against them in back-to-back -back games. The Oilers lost to them. And then the Blackhawks, who are also worse than them, and they are at least developing a team. They're the worst team in the league last year, and now they're developing a better team. But it's going to take a while. You don't expect an entire roster to turn into superstars immediately. That is fine. Those teams are supposed to be bad. But the Oilers have such a good roster and yet are the third worst team in the league with 5 wins, 11 points. Vegas has 13 wins and 28 points. Edmonton was supposed to be there with them. They're supposed to be how Vancouver is playing right now. Right at the top. Right up there with Vegas. Pushing Vegas. Maybe not quite up to where Vegas is, but pretty darn close. And yet, no, Edmonton is down here. This is Vegas, if you're wondering. I don't get it. I do not get it. So why exactly are the Oilers doing bad? Well, there is a number of reasons. Let's start with everything. But heading down to a problem that's been a problem for a while with a brief break last year, goaltending. Goaltending has been an issue for years now. For the Oilers. They had Miko Koskinen, who was brutal. Mike Smith, who, I mean, for playing in his 40s, he actually wasn't that bad. But he should not have been a starving goalie in the league. And then, our problems were solved. We signed Jack Campbell, who just came off with a good year in Toronto. And Stuart Skinner, a 2017 third round draft pick, was developing nicely and was expected to make the NHL jump. Well, Stuart Skinner turned out pretty well last year. With a fair save percentage, I mentioned he was nominated for the Calder. I think he played quite well. Now, he didn't play amazingly, but for a rookie, he played pretty well. Jack Campbell, on the other hand, had a terrible season, dropping back into the 800s in save percentage. And this is where we need to start looking in more. Because all the root of the Oilers' problems, I'm going to argue here, are bad management. You see, Jack Campbell, while he did have a good season the year before in Toronto, before that, he had never shown that much. Not enough to warrant the massive contract he was given. Multiple years, plenty, plenty of dollars. He had had a couple on and off seasons, but he had never proven, aside from one year, one fine year in Toronto, that he could be a superstar goalie. Now, someone like Darcy Kemper could have also been a great option for Edmonton. But no, since Darcy Kemper was a couple years older, then they figured, why don't we go for Jack Campbell, who is, still, is literally two years. It's a couple of years. And Darcy Kemper was 32, Jack Campbell was 30. So it's not that big of a difference. But, yeah, Jack Campbell has not turned out. And honestly, I did predict Jack Campbell turn out, but it seems kind of obvious. Here's the difference. I am a person sitting at home, going to high school, whatever it is. Ken Holland and the Oilers management team is a professional management team in the NHL. They should be able to figure these things out better than I can sitting at home like I am. So they should have predicted that Jack Campbell did not warrant the amount of money that they're giving him. But I can see where they're coming from. They need a goalie and they went for a goalie. It doesn't always work out. But there's more. Moving up to another long-time issue with the Oilers, the defense. Now, the defense for the Oilers was never awful. But then Oscar Kleffbaum started struggling with injuries, and then it got significantly worse. They just never had the depth. And Ken Holland clearly tried to address that. In his first draft, ninth overall, he drafted Philip Broberg, who was supposed to help the team. But guess what? Philip Broberg has not turned out whatsoever. He still isn't even a full-time NHLer, despite being the ninth overall pick in 2019. 
I am confidently saying Philip Broberg is a bust and was a miss of a pick. And sure, you can't swing and hit every single pick you make. And Ken Holland actually hasn't had that long to make picks in Edmonton and let them develop. But what I will say is Peter Chiarelli's drafting, the predecessor to Ken Holland as the GM at Edmonton, was just as bad, if not significantly worse. In 2017, he drafted Kyler Yamamoto in the first round. Kyler Yamamoto looked pretty good, and we'll talk about him more in a moment. But he wasn't bad, but he wasn't the best player they could have gotten there. In 2016, they drafted Jesse Pugliarvi, fourth overall, and that did not work out whatsoever. If you look at all the players they could have gotten instead, they could have Adam Fox right now. They could have Matthew Kachuk right now. They could have Clayton Keller right now. There's an endless list. But no, Jesse Pugliarvi, who is out of the league after just a miserable tenure in Edmonton. 2015, first overall pick. They made the obvious pick. There wasn't any other choice rather than Connor McDavid. You'd be stupid not to make that. So I'm not giving it any credit there. Dreisaitl was back to fourth overall. And it was a good pick. Don't get me wrong. He hit it out of the park with Drysdale. But once again, it wasn't that hard of a pick to make. It was fairly obvious. It was seen as a pretty much a given pick that Drysdale would go in the top five. So it wasn't that surprising of a pick. It's not like he made some amazing pick in the late round here. And then we're going back. 2013, Darnell Nurse. Not the worst pick they could have made. He has been a solid defenseman, but... Not the best. 2012, first overall, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Yet, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Nugent Hopkins has not been first overall pick worthy. Don't get me wrong, he's had some good seasons, but he's never been a first overall pick. The other one that round was Oscar Kleffbaum, who was very good as a defenseman, but then he started struggling with injuries. I will not blame Peter Trelli for that. And then you've got 2011, Nell Yakupov. Yeah, no. Not whatsoever. And then before that, you got guys like Taylor Hall, Jordan Eberle, etc. Guys that aren't really on the team anymore, but they did perform a bit. The problem being, not all of these draft picks were great, but they weren't all bad. A couple of them developed into solid Jenny Chellers. But, name a single second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh round pick from the Oils. And Stuart Skinner is cheating because I've already talked about him in this video. Anyone else? Nope. Oh, and also Raphael Lavoie, who hasn't actually cracked the NHL very much yet. Yeah, the Oilers have not had any of those diamonds in the rough. They haven't had a pick that you can go and say, okay, sure, the first round pick didn't work out, but hey, we got this guy in the second round who turned out great. Most of the players they draft, they get the occasional first round pick, but no one after that is able to develop and start. And that means that they have to sign more players. And that is a problem, because since you're not drafting talent, which is cheap, you're signing talent, which is a lot more expensive and creates cap issue, which I'll get more into in a minute. But heading back to the defense, Darnell Nurse was signed by Ken Holland, re-signed, and he was expected to develop into more of a defenseman, but he was signed to $9.25 million. <laughs> that is more than Gail McCarr. Roman Yossi, Miro Heiskanen, Quinn Hughes, name another guy, Rasmus Dolan, most of these guys, he is being paid more than, and he sucks. Like, you saw my defenseman rankings, if you haven't, there is a link in the description, you should go and watch that. Darnell Nurse was at the back of the list, he's not anywhere near any of the guys that are paid as much of him, and it's all like he was good one time, like Drew Doughty's up there, and Eric Carlson's up there. Drew Doughty is a great example, because he, sure, isn't the best defenseman in the world anymore, but he was a star at one point in time. He is owed that money. Darnell Nurse hasn't done anything. He can score a goal once in a while, but he cannot, for the life of him, defend whatsoever. He cannot defend. Now, Couple more signings were Brett Kulak and Cody Ceci, more recently, who were not drafted by the Oilers. And while they do get criticized a lot for the price, I look through other defenders, their price, you don't find many other guys, except for great signings by the teams. 
So I will give them credit for that. And the Matthias Ekholm trade by Canal last year was great at the deadline, trading away Tyson Berry, who was overpaid, and their former first round draft pick, Reed Schaefer, in the year prior, and their 2023 first round draft pick to the Predators. That was a good trade, because Matthias Ekholm has worked out. But overall, this defense just is not performing up to standard. Heading over to the offense, that's where our problems come in. Now, overall, there's a deep-seated problem of the fact that your bottom six sucks, especially this offseason when Ken Holland traded away Kyler Yamamoto and Clem Costin, two very good third-line guys, or even pushed up to the second line, although they shouldn't be, for future considerations to Detroit. Future considerations. You think you could have gotten a bit more than that. Now I see that they needed to clear up cap space and Yamamoto was signed to a bit much. But still, that's all for Clem Costin especially, who I thought was an amazing player. He could fight on the Oilers, he could score goals, he was aggressive. He was great. But instead, they get rid of both those guys and they replace him with Connor Brown, who just has not turned out whatsoever this year. The other problem is, there are plenty of other depth guys available. Guys that once in a while do score a goal, but the Oilers didn't go for any of those guys because they th said, hey, our homegrown talent will be fine. Dylan Hallway, who is looking better as a skater despite the lack of goals this year, would, will develop into a forward. And I'm sure he will, but you can't count on that right away. There are plenty of guys that the Oilers could have signed as a depth forward to help out just a bit more, but they didn't. They just figured, hey, our roster's going to be fine. And I will say they didn't have enough cap space, but that's from bad signings such as Darnell Nurse and Jack Campbell. So there are a bunch of deep-seated problems with the Oilers. But this year, I'm going back to my point of everything being wrong. McDavid, who got injured briefly, I'm sure he's still playing injured because he just does not look like McDavid. Drysdale looks pretty good. I would still call him playing like a top 15 forward in the league, especially based on how he's been playing. But he's still not looking like the second best player in the league. Then Zach Hyman's been playing pretty well. Brian Nugent Hopkins and Evander Kane, though, are lacking. And after that, forward group has sucked. The defensive group has sucked. Seward Skinner has fallen off a cliff. And Jack Campbell sucked so much, he was waived and sent down to the minors. Instead, where Bakersfield, they had two great goalies in Olivier Rodriguez, who was a 2018 second round pick, and Calvin Pickard, who was a 2012 second round pick, not by the Oilers. He started a bit. He never played great. They end up promoting Calvin Pickard, who, which is weird. He did have the fourth best save percentage in the NHL, but... I would have picked Rodriguez, who had the best save percentage in the AHL, because of the fact that Rodriguez is young. And given that the Oilers have hit rock bottom, and were at the time, and they've just kind of stayed there, haven't gotten up from rock bottom, they've just decided to lie down on rock bottom. And you could have promoted a young guy and hope he develops, like Stuart Skinner did. But no, let's promote the old goalie, who... I would promote him if there's an injury, because he has a better chance of being good. But at this point in time, we don't really care about if you're going to be solid. We want someone that's going to be good. Very good. And Rodriguez has very, very low floor. He could be awful, but high ceiling. He could be great. Calvin Pickard, he has just kind of average. He's not going to be amazing. He's not going to be awful. So that's another move that surprises me that Ken Holland has made. But overall... It's just this entire Oilers roster that is letting the whole thing down. And based on their payroll and all these other things, they should be playing better. We all know it. Based on just their, just based on two players, based on Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid, they should be playing better. But they're not. And that led to the firing of Jay Woodcroft, who I kind of liked. I quite liked. They hired him mid-season two years ago from Bakersfield of AHL. And immediately, he pushed the Oilers. They made it to the semifinals that year, end up losing to the Colorado Avalanche. Next year, they had a great season last year. And while they did lose sourly in the playoffs, they still played well. 
But then this year, they just start off so badly. And while I do not think Woodcroft was at fault, something had to change. And I think that had to be Woodcroft. Although I am confused with the new coach hiring in Chris Noblock, who has never coached an NHL team, was only an AHL coach for a year or two, but he did coach Connor McDavid and Connor Brown, which they're hoping is going to do something. And I can see that, but I still think there could have been better hires. The Oilers started off the no-block era pretty good with some good wins against the Kraken and the Islanders, but since then they have blown multiple goal leads and they are just back to absolutely sucking. So going back to my original question, what the heck is wrong with these Edmonton Oilers? The answer is everything. There are so many things wrong with these Oilers, but let's face it, every team has things wrong with them. Boston and Vegas have things wrong with them, but they should have enough stars to carry them through the occasional problem. And Edmonton's just not playing like it. And they're at the point, as much as it hurts me to say as an Oilers fan, they gotta start winning games, and they've gotta start winning soon. As I mentioned, it's mid-November now, and they're still only at five wins. They're eight wins behind Vegas and Boston, who are leading the league with 13. They need to pick up the pace. If they want to make the playoffs, which they need to, they need to pick up the pace. Or else, what do you do? I wouldn't start trading away people unless you can really think you can make a splash at the trade deadline that's going to help you for the future. But I just hold on to this Oilers roster until the summer and see where it goes from there. So, that's my video. I'm not happy to state any of what I just said because... Again, Oilers are my favorite team, and it hurts me about how bad they're doing, but it had to be said. But for now, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys again soon. <laughs>